Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Jira Tutorial Basics. With these videos, we are trying to create more awareness among the Jira enthusiasts, and hopefully with a little help of all of us, we can learn new things together. We already have overwhelming materials around Jira on YouTube, but this video is specially designed for leapfroggers. If you are somebody outside leapfrog and watching this video right now, I hope these videos are going to be useful to you as well. By the end of this series, you'll be learning how to use Jira effectively in your everyday project activity like project tracking, reporting, communicating, and aligning stakeholders with the development status. So here's a quick snapshot of what we'll be covering in this episode. Let's kick start. But before we do that, we can fairly assume that you already have seen a regular Jira board with several tickets and sprints. Here's a sample Jira board that you must have seen already. To the left, you can see the name of your project and the board. Usually it's a scrum board at leapfrog, but based on the project's need, it could also be a Kanban board. You can also see the backlog, active sprints, reports and releases in the same order. This basically is in the order of planning your project through backlog, executing through sprints, reviewing your project progress through reports and managing your releases. Any feature that needs to be developed is written down in the form of issues or tickets. You can see that we have already created a few tickets in the backlog and if we want to create more, here's how you do it. To create an issue, all you need to do is either click the plus button on your extreme left or simply press C on your keyboard. This will pop up a create issue screen. On the top, you have your project name followed by issue type. Now here's when you need to decide what kind of issue you are going to create. This could be a story, task, bug, improvement, research, etc. Now let's try to understand a little bit more about some of these terminologies. An epic is a large body of work that can be broken down into a number of smaller stories in Jira. Stories, also called user stories, are short requirements or requests written from the perspective of an end user. Tasks are specific actionable items which are unrelated to the story but can be part of an epic. Similarly, issues can be a bug, enhancement, improvement, or you can also create some custom issues that may be based on your need. We'll talk about that in the later videos. Let's choose to create a story for this instance. Once that is done, you need to write down the summary for that issue. The basic structure is as a user, I want to perform so that the reason we write in such a format is that the cross-functional team we work with will exactly know who, what, and why elements of the task. The deep understanding of the task is, however, written as an acceptance criteria, which also is a definition of done. For all kinds of issues, this may not be possible, and therefore this format is mostly used for stories. Now, there are several fields that you'll come across while creating a ticket. For the moment, let's skip that. And we'll talk about them while editing or updating a ticket. But at the same time, let me tell you that we can also make all these fields mandatory if needed while creating a ticket. For example, the field components can be made required just like the summary. All right, I think we have discussed a lot already on creating issues. I don't want to make anything overwhelming here. Now let's look at the backlog where our newly created ticket is resting quietly. Now here's the ticket that we just created in the backlog. If we compare this story with the one that is already created, you can see some more information on it, like a version label 1.0.0, an epic link of app user login, and also some of its subtasks like JT13 and JT14 mentioned. All this information could have been added in the fields while creating the story. But we skip that since we can always add them later by simply editing the ticket. If you click on the ticket, there will appear an extended screen to your right with all those fields reappearing. It's from where you can add any missing fields, change the fields, its issue type, its summary, or even delete the ticket if need be. Similarly, the entire create issue screen is customizable. You can show or hide any fields or change the order of the field displayed or even display these fields in multiple tabs. Here's how you do it. Just click on the ticket and then the ellipsis on the far right of the ticket and then click configure. From here, you can change the order or select only what fields you want to make visible. All right, in this ticket JT3, 
we saw earlier that it had more information displayed compared to the newly created ticket like its subtasks, its fixed version and its epic link. But to have them displayed in the ticket in the first place, we need to change the view of the ticket. This view is commonly known as the card layout, which is also customizable. For that, you will have to click on the ellipses on the top right corner of the board. Now select board settings and then card layout. Depending on your need, you could select which fields to be displayed in the ticket. Well, it can be separated into backlog and active sprints. In our example, we have selected subtask, fixed version, labels, and epic to be displayed in our card layout view for the ticket. Now that we have created our backlog, let's create and start our first sprint. To create a sprint, click the Create Sprint button. We just created a sprint called JT Sprint 1. You can edit the sprint name if you would like. It's always good to have a sprint goal to know what you are delivering at the end of the sprint. Now, you might be thinking how to move user stories or tickets to a sprint. You simply drag and drop each ticket or you can click on the ticket and select the sprint where you want to send the ticket to. To bulk move the tickets, you can click on the first ticket of the list, click and hold to the shift button and click the last ticket of the list and then drag them all to the sprint at once. Sprints are time box iterations where we forecast and commit for certain deliverables. We should only take as many tickets that the team can complete within that time frame, which is usually one to four weeks for Agile projects. The number of tickets we take in a sprint are based on team velocity and estimates, which we shall talk more about in our later video. Now that we have planned the sprint, we can start it off by clicking the Start Sprint button. By default, you'll see the sprint name, the duration, and the start and end date of the sprint. You can change the duration of the sprint as you like. In our case, we are starting a two weeks time box sprint. After the sprint is started, you can view the sprint's progress through active sprints. This is where we can see the statuses of the tickets based on the workflow that you have set up. So that's all for our first video on Jira tutorial. On the next video, we'll be talking about the different fields that come in play while creating a ticket. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, we would love to hear. So feel free to post them in the comments section. See you in the next video. And until then, goodbye.